we've got negative air pressure trapped in here. So I thought I'd just send it and undo the bolts. Nothing bad will happen, will it? Is it coming up with the bolts? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's good. There you go. <laughs> That's such an anti-climax. We're back in the plush suspension workshop, and this time I'm working on my own bike, which is always a pleasure. Uh, and today we're gonna take apart the Olin's TTX Airshock, um, which I've currently got strapped to my Levo. Probably could do with a little, a little tidy up. So we're gonna take it off, check everything's working nicely, give it a bit of a service. You're positive that the, the o ring's going to let the air out before this explodes. I couldn't get it to swap, swap air backwards. So for those watching at home, nothing bad will happen, will it? Coming up with the box. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's good. There you go. So, air springs off. That's the main parts of the air spring. Pretty simple system really and, and similar to stuff that we've seen in the other videos with forks. There's a main uh, air piston and a trapped volume of air and then a negative air spring as well. And I'll just go through and show you what those things are. Um, my bike's got quite high leverage rate, so the air spring volume, so the air can is smaller. Um, that means that you can get a higher end pressure when the shock's compressing. Whereas if your bike's got a lower leverage rate, generally you can get away with a bigger air spring volume. In here, you might be able to see this section here has got these tiny little ports just about, well, just about here on the air can. There's four of them. And that's the main air piston. This is the main air piston. It goes through the travel uh, about 20% of the way through the travel. It gets to a point where the positive air swaps past this quad ring that you can see here into the negative air volume and gives you essentially a um, equal pressure on the back of the piston that assists the piston into the, the travel of the shock. A bit like um, how a, a coil spring doesn't have any uh, stored energy in it, it's completely static. You, by having a negative air volume um, in the air spring, you're essentially creating that, that static effect uh, and you get a more supple, supple shock. So we've got the rest of the shock apart now and we're into some pretty cool little tiny bits and bobs that I can show you. Um, much like the TTX coil um, uh, video that we made, Similar kind of tech, main um, damper piston on a damper shaft, just displacing fluid in and out of a, uh, a compression assembly. But the compression assembly on this particular shot has got some quite cool little features. So I thought we'd just get up close and personal with this assembly here and try and explain all the little paths and routes that the, the fluid takes throughout the compression assembly to give you resistance, bump resistance basically, and a pedal platform. This part at the top here is actually the part that, that turns to give you different adjustments so that your adjuster is actually attached to this part here. As we turn this, you can see that it exposes or covers certain parts of the piston underneath. Now this is allowing or directing the flow of pressure, the flow of fluid through the compression assembly into different parts of the assembly. So let's take this off. So that's our adjuster off. And in there you can see the holes inside the shims there that direct the flow of fluid through this part. Now this is your compression assembly. You can see loads of different holes here. But essentially we've got two main flow holes which are here and here. These holes allow the compression fluid into the assembly and then we've got two holes out. The additional hole here, the third one, is a blow-off valve when we've got the uh, adjuster in lockout. That's our assembly completely apart. You start to see just how many little bits there are in that, in that stack. And you've got to imagine all these little tiny shims and ports 
the receiving pressure and changing pressure all the time when you're going down the trail and there's little stutter bumps and, and, and roots and rocks and things. Your back wheel flapping around those, high speed, low speed, all sorts going on. Braking forces, flex, that's all going through these, these, little, uh, these little ports and shims. And we can actually tune how much uh, resistance there is in the fluid by changing these, these shims here. These shims at the top here are low speed shims. So we can change these out for you. Maybe we could increase the uh, lockout force of the shock. And then we've got high speed shims here. Um, and in this particular shock, we can actually tune these on the, on the main piston as well. There's shims under here and changing those will change how much fluid is displaced into the secondary compression valve. So we won't be doing that today, but I might actually change the rebound tune on my bike because I found I tend to run the rebound adjuster all the way firm. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a tune on those. But everything looks good in the shock, nothing, nothing untoward, everything's clean. So I guess we can put it back together. So just putting everything back together onto the damper, so just rebuilding the damper in here. This is our main piston and you can see there's a glide ring on here. So this is the part that actually uh, essentially seals the, the, the fluid and stops it by passing through the piston. Um, it's got a piston band on it or glide ring and sometimes these can be a little bit misshapen or not quite right and this is the thing that can give you quite a lot of resistance in your shock, make your shock feel a bit sticky. So we've got this tool here, which is a sizing tool, and I can actually run this piston through the tool and it perfectly sizes it. So you get super smooth uh, shock action. And once you've done this to your, to your shock, the only shocks, um, they feel really, really good. We do this in a, in a service. So if you book your four, your four core shock in, actually, we, we do do this on both. So um, yeah, let's size it and I'll have a nice smooth shock. So damper bodies back together. We need to fill it full of damper fluid, which we'll do over on the machine. So if you'd like to follow me over, let's go and do that now. And go. This is thrilling stuff. Is this the outro? <laughs> it's back on. It feels about the same as it did. <laughs> no, it feels much smoother. It's back on. It's working. Feels good. All service, ready to go. That'll be good for probably another six months or so, maybe, of riding. On the e-bike, it does take a fair amount of pounding, um, but yeah, all fresh, looking good. <laughs>